What's up guys, it's Gamers Inc. back with another video. So today we're doing something a little bit different. We're switching the content up a little bit. So we normally do reactions on this channel, but the more I've delved into this sort of new genre of music, the more I've wanted to learn about what happens leading up to that song that we're reacting to. So I thought, what better way to do it than to sort of get history of the band? And as I'm doing it, I can educate some of you guys and potentially give you some facts that you didn't know about a band. And a band that's always been a controversial reaction on our channel for myself personally, due to me not really liking the music, has been Lorna Shaw. So I thought, what better way to start off this sort of series on the channel than doing the history of Lorna Shaw. It should educate me and give me a better understanding of the band itself and then a different level of appreciation as well and just to mix it up a little bit. So let us know how you get on with this content. If it's something that you would like me to do, if you want to suggest other bands that you want me to learn the history of and sort of document it in this video documentary, hit me up in the comments and let me know. But for now, Let's get straight into the video. Let's go. So Lorna Shaw is an American deathcore band from New Jersey. The group was initially formed in 2010 and the current lineup consists of, if I butcher these, please don't hate me in the comments, lead guitarist Adam D'Amico, drummer Austin Archie, rhythm guitarist Andrew O'Connor and current vocalist Will Ramos. At present, they've released three EPs and three albums with their debut album Psalms released in June 2015 and the most current album And I Return to Nothingness released this year in August 2021. In the early stages of Lorna Shaw, their first EP Triumph, which was released in 2010, sounded more along the lines of metalcore with a hint of deathcore, which is a, a, quite a stark contrast from the band's current direction today with their second EP Bone Kingdom showcasing more of their deathcore sound. Fun fact, a track from their second EP titled Life of Fear was actually used in a viral YouTube video called Heavy Metal Cats. Which currently sits on 6.3 million views. God damn. Interestingly enough though, the band doesn't actually like to acknowledge any of their previous music before their third EP, what, Maleficium? Mal Maleficium? I don't know. And onwards. And they cite this as their rebirth and true starting point, with the band actually still performing some of these songs from the EP to this day. The band then released their first studio album in 2015 titled Psalms, which was produced by Fit for an Autopsy guitarist Will Putney. So this is where it switches up a bit. Whilst the band was slowly gaining momentum, they still never truly gained the recognition that they deserved with the hard work and then slowly cracks started forming in the band and this is where the controversy starts. It all started in 2017 with the bassist and founding member Gary Herrera announcing he was leaving the band due to lack of desire and passion for the music. This was shortly followed by vocalist and fellow founding member Tom Barber's departure in 2018 in which he announced that he was leaving the band to join another deathcore band called Chelsea Grin. Keep that band in mind for the future. The band then released a statement reassuring fans that they would continue Lorna Shaw without Barber. And this led to the announcement of CJ McCreary as the new lead vocalist for Lorna Shaw. And this was following months of rumours where CJ McCreary was the lead vocalist for a band, a deathcore band called Signs of the Swarm. With McCreary leading the way as the vocalist, the band then released two singles titled This Is Hell and Darkest Spawn and also featured on the Summer Slaughter tour and in early October, Lorna Shaw announced they're signing with the record label Century Media Records along with the announcement of a brand new album titled Immortal. Things were finally starting to turn around for the band but Again, not too far around the corner, it was a fair bit of controversy. Fast forward to December the 23rd, 2019, so Christmas Eve's Eve, there was a very sudden announcement from the band in which they basically put out a tweet, put out on social media that McCreary was fired immediately from the band and they didn't really expand on it any further. So looking into it a little bit more, it does seem like there were quite some serious allegations of sexual abuse from the lead vocalist uh, McCreary at the time. This isn't really the time or place to go into those details. I will put up some of the tweets by one of the victims, but it is all public knowledge if you did want to look into it. But as I said, not really the time or place to be able to do that. But long story short, there were some serious allegations of sexual abuse and grooming from a victim that was 17 at the time. And this sort of had a knock on effect where more victims started coming forward and Lorna Shaw just completely separated themselves from the career. This led to the band announcing that they had to cancel the Asia tour. And then also this would delay the upcoming album, Immortal. Fans were left 
wondering the fate of Lorna Shaw and whether the album would actually ever come to light, which Lorna Shaw then clarified in this statement. We'll go a bit more in depth of this, but in search of a replacement, Lorna Shaw recruited the now beloved lead vocalist Will Ramos. And you can sort of say the rest is history from there. Following his recruitment, this was then followed shortly by the release of a new single titled To The Hellfire, which if you guys know, because I certainly know, is infamous across YouTube, and especially the reactive scene as well for a good reason. If you haven't checked it out, I'll link it in the comments. So at the time, Ramos still wasn't technically the permanent lead vocalist. He was touring with them in Europe, but he still wasn't sure of his fate. But following the release of that song, the band then knew what they had was absolute gold and they announced him as a permanent vocalist and as a result of that they announced a new EP and I return to nothingness. Ramos' debut and To The Hellfire itself became an absolutely viral hit that all of us know and it actually peaked at number one in the iTunes metal chart within its first week of release and it's now the band's most streamed record on Spotify with over four million streams. A quote from Eli Ennis of Revolver Magazine cited it as the best song of 2021 and goes on to say the band's debut song with new vocalist Will Ramos is legitimately one of the most over-the-top heavy deathcore songs in recent memory. It's got numerous bone snapping breakdowns, blast beats for days, a virtuosic guitar solo and vocals from Ramos. That is some high ratings. So where the hell, fire, giggity, did they find Ramos? When Will isn't summoning growls from the internal hells below, funnily enough, he actually works in the film industry as a freelancer, who would have guessed? He started his music career with the band Secrets Don't Sleep in 2014, and to his own admission, they were sort of winging it, they didn't really have a clue what they were doing, and they weren't sure where their music was going, in what direction. Ramos actually discovered the heavier side of music back in high school when he was learning to play guitar, when one of his friends told him to check out a band called Lamb of God, and to listen to Whitechapel. So you guys can cut me a bit of slack here, because Ramos actually started listening to Lamb of God, and he was turned off by it initially, he said that the band was too heavy for him, but the more that you started to listen to it, the more that you started to appreciate the skill and talent that goes into these type of songs. Following on from that, Will started delving further into sort of the deathcore sound and started listening to more bands similar of that nature. One band that he cites is a band called Infant Annihilator and what he actually started to do is listening to that he started to then try and replicate that sound, specifically the sound from the vocalist at the time called Dan Watson. In the process he found that he did actually have the skill to be able to replicate that sound and not only that he found that it was a very unique sound and the few people that could actually replicate that sound could only do it in the studio. There was absolutely no one doing it to that level live at the time other than Ramos. Fast forward a few years and in the middle of the controversy surrounding Lorna Shaw at the time, they were now looking for a new lead vocalist. Enter Ramos. At the time, Ramos was still technically in two different bands across two different genres as well. He was in A Monument of a Memory, which at the time was a metalcore band, and I'm gonna butcher this name so I do apologize, but his deathcore band was called Euclid? Euclid? Hmm. Let me know in the comments. Ramos was actually a huge fan of Lorna Shaw at the time as well, so it sort of worked very well for them. So they reached out to Ramos and Ramos was happy to sort of stand in at the time to cover the European tour dates. And as I say, the rest is history following on from that. He absolutely smashed it and he was unsure as to whether it'd be a permanent position or not. But at the end of those European tour dates, the band couldn't get enough of him. They immediately wanted to start booking more studio time with him and Ramos started to get a sense of belonging with the band. So fast forward to the future and the present right now where they are on such a high at the moment and they just need to keep with that momentum. So Ramos is now a key feature of Lorna Shaw and he's brought a lot more awareness, especially for myself. I'd never heard of the band until I listened to To The Hellfire. So Ramos has really sparked the interest in Lorna Shaw as a whole but they're doing some great things at the moment. And their EP, And I Return to Nothingness, has received nothing but positive reviews so far from most people within the deathcore scene. And again, another quote from a writer called Ricky Ahrens from The Wall of Sound really summarizes it well, saying, the band continue with the epic vehicle of destruction, but change tact slightly in a way that's reminiscent of their previous work. The technical detail and speed to the riffs are incredible. Once again, Ramos doesn't skip a detail in every lyric he sounds. He considers which lines end in a high or a low, and those minute details are make or break. Instead of the song focusing on the breakdown ferocity, it's more about steadfast blast beats and the technical element of this wonderful band. When the band speaks about the future, the plan is to get as many people as possible to vibe with the And I Return to Nothingness EP, to really reintroduce Lorna Shaw and kind of make the public aware of the new sound of Lorna Shaw. Thanks for watching. And building that hype and excitement from To The Hellfire and the new EP, 
So at the moment, they're hanging back on this new album release and just really carrying on with the momentum that they do have. Although saying that, the band are due to do a European tour in 2022, alongside Carnifex and Chelsea Grin. So already, as you can see, there are huge things on the horizon for Lorna Shaw and the only way is up. Guys, I just want to say, if you've made it all the way through the video, thank you so much for sticking around. I'm really enjoying making this sort of content. So if you guys like it as well, can you please let me know in the comments? Because if you guys like it, I'll make more of these videos. You never know, I might listen to some more Lorna Shaw following on from this video. But thank you guys so much. If you can, we're on the road to 5k, so please make sure that you hit that subscribe button. It's been Gamers Inc. Studios, guys. I'm out. Peace.